In this video, I'm going to talk about how to manage the uncertainty in trading. Stay tuned. Hey traders, a very warm welcome to you. Okay, so five ways to manage the uncertainty in trading. The uncertainty of trading is this. Let's define it first before we get into the ways to manage it. Is basically how do you deal with the mental aspect of not knowing if the next trade is going to be a winner the next day the next week the next month the next year unlike many other careers businesses uh whatever make jobs if you follow a process with many things the outcome is known you're a pilot you follow the process of taking off of navigating of landing you're going to get from a to b safely in this amount of time it's generally a given yes okay there are outliers of you know uh, accidents or things happening that make you go faster and on, on jet streams or whatever it may be but the point is there's a process in place you're building a house you do the foundations you do this do that do that you don't start plastering the walls uh, when you haven't done the foundations. You know, there's a process that if it's followed, you will get the same, the, the outcome you expect. However, in trading, it doesn't happen like that. You can do all the research you want. You can have the best strategy in the world. You can be ready, the best setup, the best play. You go into the trade and you lose money. That is just the nature of the beast. And many people can't deal with that uncertainty. And I get it. You know, life is all about certainty. You do this, you do that, you turn the key in your car, the engine starts, you push the button, the engine starts, whatever it may be. you dealing with that certainty, trading very, very different. So some ways that we can kind of get our heads around it a little bit better. Number one, manage and accept the risk. You know, if we say to ourselves, listen, uh, rather than the approach of trading a lot of people take is, you know, this is my stop loss level, this is that. Accepting the risk and saying, okay, I am, I have, I've given this money away. This 200 pounds, 2000, whatever the risk is in the trade, let's use 200 pounds as an example. This is what I'm prepared to pay to play on this trade. And looking at it like that, that's my price of admission, if you like. That is gone. Accept that as gone. Because then your mind is reframed of, oh, I'm risking that or I may make more. I think if you try that and say, hey, listen, this is what I'm paying. If I'm right, I get more back. If I'm wrong, I'm exactly where I was at the moment I let go of that money. And so reframing it as, you know, as if you've already lost it helps you manage the risk a little bit more prudently as well, in my experience. When you say to yourself, okay, what's the maximum uh, loss on this trade? Oh, it's my stop losses here with all my ads or whatever it may be. Uh, how am I prepared to lose that? No, then you need to adjust the position. Am I prepared to lose that? Yes, okay. Am I going to lose that? I could do. Am I still okay with it? All right, yes, I am okay with it. So then the uncertainty kind of goes away a little bit. Yes, you may make money from it, but you've almost almost said in your mind, you know what, that money has been allocated to that trade, to that, to that opportunity. And if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I need to just let it go. So managing and accepting the risk truly as opposed to just putting your stop in with your position size and not really knowing how much it's going to be. Where would that put your account value if you got stopped? Is it going to trigger you into something that you didn't want to be in mentally state? All that kind of stuff helps you deal a little bit more with the fact that you don't know if it's going to be a winner or a loser. Okay, number two, focus on the process and not the trade easier said than done but once you can crack this i think it's an easier i was going to say process but the double process an easier way of trading and i think it's a, a re relatively easy thing to do focusing on the process and not the trade so when you're in a trade get rid of all the stuff that's got the flashing lights showing you're running p l showing all that kind of stuff um you know if, if the chart is if the trade is sitting sort of in the cruise, as I call it, i.e. you've done the sort of leg work with the entry and you're sitting there, you don't need to be staring at the chart. Get rid of it. You know, focus on the process, which is my setup, my strategy, my risk management, and saying, okay, well, the numbers should play out. It doesn't matter if this goes up and it comes down and goes up, comes down, eventually stops me out. I don't need to have that emotional roller coaster with each, you know, knowing that over time, if I take enough of these, then I'm going to make money. Or I should make money. If I don't make money, I can tweak it. It's looking at it again with that big sample size. So, you know, managing the uncertainty in that way of saying, okay, I don't need to know if this trade is going to be a winner or a loser. And I don't need to kind of suddenly go, oh, yes, it's going to be a winner. I oh, know it's going to be a loser. It's going to win, it's going to be a loser. Except it could be either. 
and, and, and do something else. You know, look for another trade strategy, look for kind of go through some of your your, your uh, performance, whatever it may be. You know, once the trade is on, the trade is on. Focus on the process, not the trade when you're actually in it. So number three, recognizing your edge. Yeah, I think many people confuse this as like, how do I make money in trading? You make money in trading by having a, a statistically um, positive edge that over time is going to is going to make money for you. Now that could be anything, and this is where the confusion lies. Someone says, "Well, if I'm trading head and shoulders, is that statistically a kind of a positive edge?" Probably not on its own. If someone just analysed a head and shoulders over X period of time, however, let's say you had an inverse head and shoulders in a bull market, I'm sure that's a very high probability of success. If you had a head and shoulders in a bear market after an intraday down move, whatever, you get the point. The point is you're adding these little things together to help give you an edge in trading and knowing that if I keep trading that strategy, I will make money over time. So that's why we're making money, guys, recognizing what your edge is and recognizing that your edge is just an edge. Like, if you struggle with the uncertainty, of trading, think of it like this, and I've talked about this many times before. Think of yourself as the owner of a casino. You've got a roulette table, a blackjack table, a baccarat, uh, any other games, video, video poker, slots, whatever. You've got those there. You know that each one of those has a statistical edge for you. A roulette's the simplest one to kind of understand, or red and black, and we've got that zero in the middle that gives you your statistical edge. You know that the uncertainty of whether you're going to make money on the next spin. You do not know whether the, the, uh, the customer is going to win or lose, but you know that if enough customers trade enough times, you will win. And so you don't care about the next roll, the next spin, the next turn of the card. You just want the volume, the, 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 the opportunities to present themselves. And yes, in, 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 in a casino, it's just someone putting chips down for the next spin of the wheel. But in trading, it's waiting for that opportunity when we do have the edge, when there is a setup that ticks our boxes and gives us that edge. And we should have traders have multiple of uh, multiple setups, multiple strategies that we can use. And again, using the right setup and strategy in the right market conditions is what gives us our edge. And if we recognize what our edge is, why it works, and where its weaknesses and vulnerabilities lie, this becomes a little bit easier to handle. It becomes easy to say, okay, it's just a numbers game. If I take enough of these trades, these are really good setups. You know, I love this pullback and this and that and the other. And I know that it may not work for me, but boy, when it works, it's a good, good trade. I've done those and historically, I've seen the, seen the kind of evidence from it, whatever it may be. Uh, uh, but accepting the uncertainty that comes with that becomes a little bit easier then when you recognize you've got your register. Okay, number four, guys, never putting too much weight onto one trade. That is both, uh, in monetary terms and emotional terms. You know, accepting, again, we, we're kind of repeating ourselves a little bit here, but saying to ourselves, listen, if we put too much weight on, this is the best ever trade I've seen, it's fantastic, it's great, even if it's a grade A setup, even if you're one of those guys who kind of splits the setups into, you know, A to D and, and allocates capital accordingly, even the A plus platinum setup is gonna lose from time to time. And recognizing that so that you haven't got too much capital on the line, you haven't got too much you know, money on the line, emotional capital, and, and, and before you make the trade, kind of saying to yourself, hey, you know what, this could be a loser. It could be a loser. It's great, it's fantastic, it ticks a lot of boxes. Historically, it's been very, very profitable for me. This could still be a loser. Prepare for that, accept that, deal with that. And, 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 and reframing it before you go in and say, it's the best thing, it's definitely gonna go up, definitely gonna go up, I'm gonna go in on it, and then being disappointed because all you're doing is kind of fueling this fear of the uncertainty. And right, number five, guys, if stopped thinking in terms of win or lose, win or loss. This is, if anything, uh, if you don't take anything from this video apart from that, then I think it's a good job done because this really is framing things in the wrong way. You know, as we said about the casino, the casino doesn't go, oh no, the, the, the customer won. Oh no, the customer won. Oh no, the customer won. He doesn't look at that. He looks at the bottom line at the end of the day, the week, the month, the year. Same as trades. We shouldn't be looking at each trade saying, oh no, we lost, we lost, we lost, and reinforcing that kind of behavior pattern of win, lose. If you think, uh, if you had a trade where you were, 
losing five times in a row and then you had a 10 to 1 risk reward trade that worked for you, you've made money. But if you haven't stuck it out and you haven't managed the risk accordingly, you're never going to get to that trade at the end of it, which makes up for all the loss and more and makes you your money, your profit on the week, the year, whatever it may be. And so, you know, reframing your mind that it's a winner, it's a loser, it doesn't matter. It's how much how much money am I making? And again, I'm not talking in terms of magnitude of money, but kind of saying, okay, well, what's the performance? Maybe you don't have to use it in money. Maybe you can do it in terms of pips or in terms of points or in terms of percentage. So you're not kind of anchoring your mind uh, to money. Again, that's something we've talked about, say, so have on other videos, but just literally extrapolating it out and saying, okay, this is the chunk of trades I'm looking at. This doesn't matter at the moment. This may be a poor performing area, but it could end up coming back way, way better and making a lot more money. So uh, and that's, again, understanding the uncertainty of how the outcome could be. If you knew that at the end of it, you were going to make X amount of money, you don't know if that's going to come straight away. If it does, you think, very, very nice, thank you very much. Or you have a string of losers and then the edge starts to come and play out and then you make money and at the end of it, you're still making the same amount of money. You don't know that that's going to happen. You don't even know if you're going to make money or not. And so, you know, looking at it in terms of a chunk of trades rather than putting all the weight onto one individual trade, there's a lot of synergy between these two here, isn't there? But also, you know, stop thinking in terms of that language of win or loss and thinking in terms of, okay, it's my risk capital, let's see what happens, let's see what happens, let's see what happens. Let it play out, let the edge play out. All right, guys, that's how to manage the uncertainty in your trading, or it's not really how to manage it, it's some ways and ideas that you can manage that mental kind of uh, hurdle that we have of dealing with the fact that even if we follow the process, it might not turn out as we want for us. Uh, any more comments in the comment section below. And as always, take care, guys, keep the risk managed. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.